as well as our ability to record MIDI notes in MIDI clips and our audio clips that we can import or record and then sequence along this sequencer line, we can also record the things that we do to our controls, be they the faders in the Reaper DAW mixer or even controls that are inside our plugins. In order to record this, we need to record what's called automation. And automation is pretty simply called because once it's recorded, it automates a control for us without us having to touch it again. In order to get this automation to record, we need to create or attach envelopes to the control. Now you remember envelopes from when we looked at synths and we looked at the ADSR envelope. But as opposed to having strictly defined portions, an automation envelope is free to move in any way we see fit and it will pick up what we do to play it back to that control next time. Let's take a look at how we do this. If we come over and take a look at the track menus here, we can see that there's this little button on each of the tracks and this is our automation button. If we click on it, we'll be able to see all of the envelopes that we can make visible and arm for anything that's in this track. And as you can see, we've got lots and lots in here and there's two reasons for that. Firstly, it's because we've got contact in this track and contact gives us lots and lots of controls that we can automate despite the fact that not all of them will be used by the contact player. However, these ones over here for our effects, which we've got in this track as well, are nicely, neatly named so that we can see what they are and we can see whether we want to see them. Let's say, for instance, I want to see the sample frequency in Time Machine. Just click on this left hand most button and it makes it visible. Now, when we move this out of the way or even close it, we can see that we've got here what's called an automation lane underneath the track that it belongs to. And this purple line, and it doesn't always have to be purple because the more automation lanes you have, the more colours you'll get. It's a way of making things easier to navigate when we've got lots of things going on at the same time, is a straight line. And that represents the fact that at the moment, this dial is in one place over time. OK, so when I move our fader, it will move what we're happening in the automation lane and then play it back. In order to actually get our automation to record, we need to come over again to our automation button and this time right click. When we right click, we can come down to the bottom of the menu and see the five different automation modes. Now the top two, trim, stroke, read and just read, are playback modes for the automation and the bottom three are ways to record our automation in. First of all, we're going to take a look at touch. So let's click on the touch automation. Now you'll see that the automation button's gone yellow and also quite handily we can see yellow in the track fader and pan. Okay. This means now that when I press play, I'll be able to move this control and it will record how this control moves. Let's take a look. Okay. Now you can see that even though I'm not using the control, the control itself is moving along with what's happening to this automation. Okay. Now the reason that touch automation is the first one we looked at is it's probably the one that you're going to be using most, if not all of the time. Touch automation is so called because it only records automation when we're touching the control or perhaps more specifically moving the control. If we're not moving the control, then the automation reverts back to the actual already recorded automation that's in the automation lane. So let's just illustrate that. I'm going to just move this control a little bit from time to time to tweak this automation envelope we've already got when I press play. As you can see, I get the ability to just make small tweaks and as soon as I let go of or stop moving that control, it reverts back to where it was in the envelope, which is quite handy for making tweaks if we go a little bit wrong, but we just want to move things a little bit more. 
Now compare that to latch and write modes and we get a very different scenario. In latch mode you'll see that the automation button goes purple and nothing will happen until I press or move the control. And when I move the control, okay, if I let go again, the automation recording is latched on. And even though I'm not touching the control anymore, the automation was recording the fact that that control wasn't moving. So if we have latch mode on, then we can very easily overwrite a lot of automation, even if we were trying to just make a small tweak. Write mode goes one step further. If we right click here, go down to write mode, it doesn't matter whether you touch the control or not, write mode will constantly look at what the control that the automation envelope is attached to is doing and record the automation for that. So if I bring this all the way down to the bottom and press play, you can see that without actually doing anything at all, that automation is recording into the lane. So as we said, most of the time we want to use our touch mode. Okay. The reason that we've got latch and write mode are for if the controller that you're using is motorized, for instance, because if the controller you're using is motorized, then it will always do what you tell your controller to do. And the automation will record as it was anyway. There are other things as well, say, for instance, if you've got encoders and the lights can change and so on, there are advantages to having latch and write modes. But for most of us, most of the time, touch mode is the kind of automation we want. Now, let's just go into touch mode one more time and just record a little bit more automation in this lane so that we can demonstrate the next part. So all I'm just going to do is record a little bit of automation in here. OK, so now I've got this lane. Every time I play now with this control, it's going to record new automation and I don't really want that. If we come back now and turn off one of the recording modes and come into read or trim and read, then we're going to get to the point where we can use our controls, but we can't or alter what's being recorded in the envelopes. Now there are actually two different behaviors depending on whether you're using Reaper's built-in controls, say for instance the mixer, or a plugin. Because for plugins at the very least, what is essentially happening is Reaper is telling the plugin what to do in exactly the same way that it tells it what to do when you move the control. It's just that you moving the control is taken out of the equation and it's recording what you've already done. The plugin doesn't really know any different. So if you've actually recorded something already, it doesn't matter if we're in trim or read. If we go to read, I won't really be able to move this control because at the moment, the plugin thinks that I'm trying to do two things at once and can't really understand. If I want to be able to move this control but not lose what I've done with the automation, all we need to do is come over to the automation lane again in the track view and just click on the power button and it will bypass it. Now you can see that this automation envelope has gone a light colour and it means that now when I press play, it's not being sent to the control and I can move the control myself. However, if at any time I decide I want to hear what I've automated already, I can click on it and we go back to being able to automate via the envelope. The difference between the two different automation modes, trim and read and read, make more difference when we're using something of Reapers. So if we come down to, let's say for instance, we want to automate one of these volume faders. If I automate the volume fader on ride, all I need to do is remember, come over to automation, right click and do touch. And now when I press play, you can see the automation being recorded in. Okay, and we're more concerned about the fact that we can see the automation at the moment. Like Doing that. anything particularly exciting with it. Now, if I move back to 
trim stroke read, okay, you'll see and the, the control itself isn't moving, but we can hear the automation. And this is really handy because I can turn down the fader and we get essentially a ratio or a cap on what the automation can do compared to what it's physically set to. This is good for if you want to do something like record a fade out, but also want to still remain in control of the mix. Compare that to our other mode. So if we right click again and come down to read, we get the same kind of behavior that we get in our plugins and our control moves, but we can grab a control in automation mode in Reaper, just not in the plugin. So you can see all I have to do is grab it, and I can keep it still. If I let go again, it will move again. Okay. And that's basically all there is to automation. In exactly the same way that we can record MIDI and then move it ourselves, we can do the same thing with automation. If we zoom in, we can see that we've got our line and we've got these points on our line. Now, if I click a point and drag it around, I can move it. If I come over to a point that hasn't got a line, Okay, I can come over and create a new point by right clicking and create a line like that. So if I didn't record anything manually, I could create points to create very linear curves. Linear curves? Well, there is such a thing as a linear curve, but that's just a line, isn't it? Uh, so it's very easy. And if we click on one and right click it, and we can say that we want to cut points, we want to select points, delete points. So if I wanted to maybe select more than one point, I could select that point and hold shift to select another point, right click and say delete selected points. And that just deletes the two points and creates a straight line in between the two points that are left. Now there are ways of doing even more advanced curves and so on and so forth with automation, but we don't really need to worry too much about them because all you need to do is create new points such as here for instance and you'll see that when we create these points with our say for instance bezier curve like i just did for if i click on this one and right click it and say set point shape uh, bezier is, is the, the smooth curve type we're not getting a huge amount of difference. It will make a big difference if we've got a long fade, but it's actually probably just as good and certainly a lot quicker to just draw in or hold and move and edit when you've finished the resulting natural curve. It'll give you a more natural sound as well. The last thing that we need to remember when it comes to automation is that you'll notice that at no point here did I actually record we don't need to be recording when we're in automation record mode because automation record mode, be it touch, latch or right, is separate to the main transport record. So don't forget that if you set anything to right touch or latch mode, and most of the time you'll be in touch, that you will still be able to record whether or not this is recording. That's really all there is to learn about automating your parameters, certainly to the level that we'll be able to make our music. So at the moment, if I come back to here and press play, we've got our automation of this resample rate and we can create as many of these as we want. Let's just try one more as well. Let's, uh, So as you can see, it just adds another one in and it's as simple as that. So we can bypass them to turn them off or we can just come up to our point and we just want to read. Now, go back where we were. So that's all there is to automation lines.